Hey folks, George here. This time we're going to continue the debate around censorship, pornography, and hate speech, and the moral issues that shall be entangled with this mess. In examining these moral issues, we are going to examine the article by Catherine McKinnon entitled Pornography, Civil Rights, and Speech. McKinnon drops her gloves right away at the beginning of her article, and she says flat out, it is not true that men and women are equals in society. That's the whole point of feminism. With that in mind, these notions of equality and harm were all created from a male perspective, not a woman's perspective. The invisible violence against women, such as rape, battery, sexual harassment, forced prostitution, are all systematic in the American system. All of these violences are rendered invisible partially because they're underreported. Why are they underreported? Because no one listens to or believes women, according to McKenna. For that reason, all of these violences are invisible harms. Invisible in that nobody sees them. We'll talk about that complicated notion a bit more through her article, but that's one aspect in the invisible harms that women suffer in society. After all, from a woman's perspective, women are told by men what is abuse and what isn't abuse. Women are not seen as worth very much. They're told that they're equal. Women are. However, it's equality for women. That goes to show it's not real equality at all. This is women's equality. Let's give you some women's equality. Let's give you some women's protection. That's not real protection, McKinnon is going to say. That's not real equality, McKinnon is going to say. Now back to the question of pornography. Pornography portrays rape and battery and sexual harassment and abuse. But in porn, it's called sex. This is exactly McKinnon's point. In celebrating rape and battery and sexual harassment and abuse, pornography actually promotes and legitimizes those things. Again, it's only sex though, right? It's not really rape. That is McKinnon's point, is that pornography is, we're echoing some concerns of Longino last time, pornography is lying to us or telling women what is rape and what isn't rape. What is sex and what isn't sex? What is protection? What isn't protection? What is equal and what isn't equal? Pornography tells women this from a male perspective. In doing so, pornography portrays the truth about sex and constructs what a woman really is. Porn says that women are to be treated like humiliated sex objects and that women want that. Pornography eroticizes the patriarchal hierarchy in our society and it sexualizes inequality. Pornography offers an illusion of female freedom that women are freely acting and chose to be there. However, this is a key and very controversial point of McKinnon's. However, pornography is forced sex. Pornography is sexual politics. And pornography is an institution of gender inequality. Thus, pornography is not harmless fantasy. Rather, pornography institutionalizes inequality and violence. Pornography is not mere imagery. It creates the sexual reality. Pornography defines and produces the sexual reality. What sexual reality? That women are unequal. 
That women want to be humiliated. That women are mere sex objects. Because pornography is so successful in constructing this social reality, it becomes invisible. There's that invisible part again. Pornography makes all of this structural determinations of women and subordination of women, it makes it invisible. Therefore, we don't recognize that it's harmful. What is all of this really saying? It's really saying pornography brainwashes society. Pornography is the brainwashing of society such that women are subordinated, such that women are mere sex objects. Pornography brainwashes all of us. Furthermore, let's get clear on American law anyways. Law can't tell the difference between rape and intercourse. Since law can't tell that difference between rape and intercourse, the law shouldn't be trusted to tell us that pornography is okay either. Now, that said, a key idea of McKinnon's is going to be this differentiation between obscenity on one hand and pornography on the other hand. What is obscenity? Obscenity is a mere moral idea. This is obscene or this is bad. Pornography is different. Pornography is actually political practice. Pornography institutionalizes the power and the powerlessness that is uh, reproduced in our society. To bring this brainwashing point home, McKinnon suggests that pornography coercively forces sex upon women. Again, the coercion is invisible because it's done through brainwashing. Women are told that they're choosing to do pornography. McKinnon's point is those women are being brainwashed into doing pornography. Even more, pornography is sexual discrimination. Pornography is the violation of women's rights. Pornography is sexual inequality. With all that in mind, the women's enforced inferiority should outweigh the pleasure that men get from watching and enjoying pornography. Otherwise, the whole notion of equality is meaningless. The whole notion of equality is meaningless if you don't weigh the subordination of women higher than men's masturbatory pleasures. Now, like Langino, uh, McKinnon does acknowledge that there's a difference between pornography on one hand and erotica on the other. Pornography is that stuff which debases women and tells all these lies about women and institutionalizes the inequality of women. Erotica, on the other hand, is premised on equality. I guess we have to count on McKinnon to teach us the difference of certain images or movies or works that treat women equally and which ones don't. Yeah, uh, that's, like I said, a controversial part of her ideas. By the way, here's the great lie. It's claimed that sexual equality, that women's equality, that equality for the sexes, equality for the genders, is a legal goal. Well, if it is a legal goal, then porn, which harms women by making them inferior and institutionalizing this inferiority, which is done invisibly via brainwashing, if that is the goal, sexual equality, then porn shall be banned. Porn shall be censored. This is what I love about McKinnon. She looks at history and says something similar has already been done regarding racial equality. For example, racial segregation was banned. Why? Because separate is not equal, they said. By the way, this is to me the most convincing part of McKinnon's argument. She looks at history and says the same thing has already been done regarding racial segregation. After all, for many years, the claim was separate but equal. Separate but equal. Then, in 1954, through the Supreme Court case Brown versus Board of Education, the Supreme Court acknowledged separate is not equal. And thus, segregation shall be banned. 
McKinnon is asking for something similar when she's talking about censorship of pornography, right? After all, when you really think about it, there's no real reason that separate must be unequal. There's no logical reason, at least. But the Supreme Court decided in 1954, since they acknowledged that separate really is unequal, it should be banned. McKinnon wants the same thing for pornography, since pornography creates the inequality in the same way that segregation created the racial inequality. Pornography creates the sex-based inequality, and thus it should be banned. McKinnon later states that research suggests that more pornography leads actually to more violence and discrimination against women. Here's McKinnon's quote, show me an abuse of women in society and I'll show it to you made sex in porn. What's her point here? Pornography is used to break women. Pornography is used to teach women submission. Pornography is used to terrorize and silence women. McKinnon shares this anecdotal account of this kind of um, pornography facilitating and encouraging such abuse. Here's where McKinnon goes a step far for many people. This is a very controversial claim. Rape, torture, battery, harassment, abuse. That is pornography. In the same way, pornography is rape. Pornography is battery. Pornography is sexual abuse. Pornography is sexual harassment. Let's look back at history again. There are already exceptions to free speech in America. These exceptions are there because the harms that such speech produces. By the way, Strawson had said, oh, the response to offensive speech is more speech. And she takes that idea from John Stuart Mill. Here's the problem, according to McKinnon. More speech isn't enough. Why not? Because women's speech is unequal. Even more, pornography discredits women's speech. It devalidates women's speech. And thus, pornography silences women. What is her point right here? Free speech for men in the form of pornography silences free speech of women. I love how McKinnon gives the segregation example. She goes back to uh, the segregation example and says, by the way, in the old days, segregation times, there was a sign that said whites only. That's only speech, isn't it? The point is that we banned such signs from put, uh, being put on the front of businesses, haven't we? Whites only is speech. Guess what else is speech? Pornography is speech, but it's harmful speech. In the same way that saying whites only should be banned, McKinnon is saying pornography should be banned. Furthermore, to really bring this point home, I'm repeating a bit now, but free speech presupposes that all are equal. The problem is women are not equal in our society, according to McKinnon. Even more, women's speech is silenced. Therefore, they can't have free speech. The greater goal for McKinnon is not censorship, but to give more speech to women. That's the main point of her views and her attitudes towards pornography. I hope that clarifies some of McKinnon's ideas uh, and helps us ruminate on how convincing or not they might be. See you next time. Bye-bye.